Tell you what, if the Rattlers can shoot and the Eagles perform like they have in practice, what a way to start off the college basketball season it could be in the A Sun Conference, baby. 100%. And, you know, Jay Webby, a couple of players, a lot of guys are really going to have an impact oh. here tonight. But two guys in particular, we'll start with the guy from Florida AM, Keith Kittles, this junior guard, can really light it up from long range. Well, Keith Littles can shoot, can flat out 49% from the three last year. They have to replace all those men that they lost out of their 107 threes. FGCU, who's their leader? Cape Coral's own. Caleb Cato. Yeah, a fiery can, leader with oh, a big heart. Big heart, defend, can shoot. Caleb does his thing. Littles does his thing. Batten down the hatches, baby. <laughs> Cato uh, averaging uh, almost 13 points a game last year. Uh, four rebounds a game as well. A fiery guy who really loves it when it's crunch time, and that's his time. As... FGCU and Florida A&M are set to tip it off. Your starters, Cato, Franco Miller Jr. for FGCU. Jalen Warren, the new guy, Eli Abayev. So much to talk about with him, the freshman, and Justice Rainwater in there. And for Florida A&M, it's Jalen Spear, Cameron Reeves, MJ Randolph, Evans Desir, and DJ Jones as we are underway in Dunk City. And a quick shot and a make, a mid-range jumper from D.J. Jones, the two-lane transfer for the Rattlers. D.J. Jones can shoot. He can make things happen. And the Rattlers are going to be active on their defense. Here is a Bayev, number 14, a guy that everybody around Dunk City is so excited about. Jalen Warren, his patented floater we've come to know over the years. A miss on his first attempt. Well, Jalen Warren is not shy about going to the basket. He will put it on the floor and take it to the 10. Opening minute here in Dunk City is FGCU and Florida A&M. These players and coaches, support staff, they've worked so hard in these recent months to practice with uh, all that's going on with COVID and and other things to, to finally get here. And uh, I know everybody is excited about this game tonight as nice Spear interior, throws it around. Nice throws interior it defense there by FGCU to get that Aaron pass. Robert McCollum in his fourth season, the head coach of the Rattlers. Previously was a head coach at Western Michigan and also uh, with the Bulls at USF in Tampa. His Rattlers... Off to a 2 nothing start. Well, FGCU is running what is called a flow offense. And what you're going to see is a lot of movement, and the bigs are going to switch. There is Miller with the right hand. Franco Miller Jr., fresh off his transfer from Ole Miss. Getting FGCU on the board. Oh. And a block from behind by Cato, and then Rainwater with the rest of it, but he's called for the foul. Well, Rainwater was saying something. Uh, this is a no layup zone. The correction on the foul, Jay Webb. They're going to get Caleb Caddo on that initial contact with the foul. And that will send Cameron Reeves, the senior veteran from Champaign, Illinois, to the free throw line. Cameron Reeves, a guy who was a uh, regular starter for Coach McCollum a year ago, started 23 of 24 games, makes one of two. Here's Warren and Miller as they Breaking get the press. FGCU 10 and 22 last season, 7 and 9 in the A Sun. It's knocked away, and an offensive foul is going to be called against Franco Miller Jr. on his way to the hoop. Well, the Rattlers really are shutting down those driving lanes and then planting bodies to absorb those charges. Three quarter court press applied by Coach Fly's team. Here's Jones working against Justice Rainwater. Jones with the left hand, and it's rebounded underneath. Caddo has got it. 
Here is Miller. Miller going to launch the three in and out. Doesn't get the shooter's roll. And boy, that was nearly halfway down, oh. Jay Webb. It's a good look by FGCU. Reeves from up top. And Rainwater, a big rebounder. Obviously, the big shot blocker snares that one and hauls it in. We're trying to get the ball here to Abev, who can uh, be a force outside, has the ability to put the ball on the floor and go to the hole. And Michael Fly in his third season as head coach here at FGCU. He's an assistant, of course, under Joe Dooley and Andy Enfield prior to that. Well, Dakota Rivers just came in the game. Now watch, Eli has the ability to not only score, but look at this. Look at Abayev, and he's called for steps. It was a nifty move. Well, he but, was saying, uh, drag that pivot foot just a little bit. Well, you know what he said? I know I'm new to the conference, but you may want to watch what I can do. <laughs> he has got incredible skills that will be fun to watch throughout this season. And a block inside by Dakota Rivers. But the Eagles throw it away. Reeves trying to go all the way, but Cato is the one that winds up with it. Now, did you notice how the Eagles were gotten, got back? Bodies flying Whoa. all over the place. Back and forth action. Reeves. Outside spear, no good. Is this a track meet or a basketball game? It feels game? like one so far in the first little over three minutes gone here in Dunk City is Florida A&M with a 3-2 lead. Now, you notice that they bring the bigs up high with this flow, uh, flow offense. There goes Cato, right slicing through the defense to the 10. Well, there's a reason he's picked on the first team all-conference in the A-Sun. Caleb Cato says this team this year has really bought in. They have a lot of joy in playing basketball, and he has more than he has seen at FGCU in a number of years. Now, look at, now you're seeing Eagles on the floor, baby. Abayev grabbing the 50-50 ball. Cato wide open. In and out. Abayev is there, up and under. And his first two points as an FGCU Eagle. Now, let me ask you something. When is the last time you saw this much energy by an FGCU Eagle men's team? It is definitely showing here in the early going. People on the floor. Band-Aid sales may go up in this part of Southwest Florida. <laughs> 15 and a half to play in the first half. Here's MJ Randolph, and he traveled. And a timeout on the floor with 15, 24 left to play. Basketball season is back, and the Eagles out to a 6-3 lead. Stay with us live here on ESPN+. Plus. Students, 33,000 proud alumni, and one Southwest Florida State University. That's the FGCU effect. Back live at Alico Arena here in Dunk City. The Eagles out to a quick 6-3 lead. So many reasons and uh, keys to the game for victory. Jay Webb, give us a few. Well, FAMU, all their new players, they want to develop and find some good team chemistry. And then number two, they want to shoot well from the three because out of the 107 last year, they lost 89 of those. FGCU, hey, one of the things they want to do is play like they practiced. And number two, compete for 40 minutes. Well said about the uh, the 40 minutes of competition. Uh, FGCU last year uh, played so well in stretches in a lot of games, but uh, saw games get away from them that they had an opportunity to close out. And uh, I know that's something that Michael Fly and all these players are, are definitely conscious and aware of and want to improve on this season. And as for... Florida A&M, and you mentioned uh, the three-point shooting, and a lot of veteran leadership on this team, but they did lose a lot of those threes as Miller throws it away. Well, watch this now. Young man, number one, Luis Rolon. Puerto Rico, a freshman. Young man has a high basketball IQ. There he is, number one on the ball right now. It is controlled by Jalen Spear, uh, one of three talented freshmen in this recruiting class that we will see tonight. There's the jump shot from 18 feet, and it's good from Brown. Johnny Brown, a JUCO transfer from Daytona Beach. 
Well, Johnny Brown, another one of those good shooters. Luis Rolon will find open players and can, as a freshman, he can run the offense. And look at the pass. Abayev finding Cato for the finish. Now, did I tell you Abayev will find you? <laughs> and the Eagles stretch the lead. MJ Randolph. So much talent. Jalen Spear pulling up from 17. It's short. Miller's got it. Slows the pace just a little bit. Eagles with at seven and nine, a record in the A Sun last year that was tied for sixth. And no look pass by Roland is thrown away. And quickly to the other end. Now Randolph watch, oh, had a chance but couldn't finish. And here is Miller and an offensive foul called against Franco Miller, and that's two on that young man. Franco Miller, the old Miss transfer, got uh, the NCAA waiver to be eligible to play right away, and that's, I know, uh, very important for Coach Fly and his staff. Well, the young man coming in the game right now, number 10. You know, you Zach know the, Anderson in there, uh, you know the, the freshman, freshman from Orlando for FGCU. You, you know what his nickname is? The Problem. <laughs> he will be for a lot of people. Because he can guard all five positions. He can put the ball on the floor, he can rebound, and he can score. Knocked away, and a great job by Cyrus Largy knocking that away. And here's a guy that teammates absolutely love. Oh. Cyrus Largy brings it every day to practice. The only sprint that he lost this year is when he had a bad ankle. Eagles by three. Randolph from the free throw line. No good. Dakota has really improved. Look at that body. FAMU just two of ten from the field here in the early going. Cato in and out underneath Rivers. Yes. A couple of offensive rebounds that have led to putbacks for points so far early in this game for FGCU. So key this year. This is something they have struggled at in recent years, Jay Webb. Well, they're, they're long and they're athletic. Inside it goes and the soft lay-in from DJ Jones. He's got four. I don't know how that slip happened because he was wide open. <clears throat> Rivers, can he do it again? Hit from inside earlier. Brown. And again, this fast pace up and down continues. Luis Rolon from Ponce, Puerto Rico. Zach Anderson, two freshmen, pure freshmen in the game. Brand new faces for Coach Fly. And an offensive foul again this time. Dakota Rivers is called for it. And we've seen a couple of these offensive fouls here, Jay Webb, so far, but it, aggressiveness if nothing else. One of the things you have to be well aware of, if you're studying a pick, you must be set. There can't be any movement of body. Side it goes to Jones. Williams, Jameer Williams, back to Reeves, who pulls up, and he hits it. Bam, you needed a big bucket from outside. That's their first three-pointer, and it ties the game at 10 apiece. Cato and Rainwater in there. A compliment of young players with them, oh. and Justice Rainwater punishing the rim. <laughs> a return to Dunk City. Now you notice that the freshman Anderson found the senior and said, throw it down, big man, throw it down. If there's anybody on this squad that is the epitome of the Dunk City moniker, it is Justice Rainwater, as we've come to know. Johnny Brown knocking a three down. That's two threes in a row for the Rattlers. And they take a one-point lead. Their first lead since 2 nothing. The 
you can tell Justice Rainwater under the basket right now. His blood is pumping after that tomahawk throwdown. Rolone all the way. Saw the lean to the hoop and took it. Now you notice how he sort of looked to see what was available and then what? Boom, to the hole. High Layup. basketball IQ on High this freshman. IQ. High basketball IQ. And Coach Fly told us about uh, Rolone and, and the other freshmen. They walked in the door here at FGCU with a ton of confidence and swag. 14-13 Eagles. Six to shoot. Rainwater out on the perimeter to defend. And he snares the rebound. Watch this Luis roll on. He'll find people he can shoot. A little more than 10 minutes gone here in the opening half. Largy kicking it to Cato. Cato contested his layup attempt and blocked inside. MJ Randolph. Reeves loses the handle. Largy's got it. Rolone ahead. Anderson next to him. And a blocking foul is going to be called inside. And that'll take us to the media timeout. Cameron Reeves is going to be called for that one. Back and forth. Up tempo. Eagles by one, 14-13, but a big three there before the break. Cameron Reeves for Florida AM, and m and they've hit a couple from the behind the arc, uh, Jay Webb. Well, they shot the three very well last year, and FGC knew to win the game tonight, they had to defend a three. Eagles haven't made a three, but shooting well from the floor so far, 7 of 13. Well, Gagliardi is in, and he is a three-point machine. Well, Gagliardi was brought here to shoot a lot of threes, and he put a lot of them up last year. Didn't make as many as Coach Fly and the staff had hoped, but uh, when he gets it going from back there, we know he's got the stroke. Now, did you see Lord a and turns it away. Did you see Roland's defense out there creating that turnover? Zach Anderson, true freshman, inbounds to Luis Roland and... Two of the three freshmen, and these guys know each other. They played AAU ball together. Gagliardi's first shot. And look at Abayev get on the floor. Couldn't end up coming up with it, but that effort is something you better get used to if you're going to watch FGCU this year. He is a tough player. And an elbow. And lower in the shoulder that time. Bryce Morang. Well, Morang had Largy saying, you may be bigger, but I got you. This recruiting class, Victor Rosa, we have not seen yet. Uh, also from Puerto Rico, Rosa and Rolono, both from Puerto Rico. They played high school basketball down there together. The third freshman we talk about, Zach Anderson's from Orlando, but all three of those guys played AAU ball on the same team together. So, these three freshmen are uh, know each other so well. We're alone from way outside, an ill-advised shot there. Largy comes up with it. And the Eagles turn it over. Stepped on the out-of-bounds line. And that will take us to our next media timeout with 7.58 remaining in the first half. Eagles by one. Anxious uh, first half here so far. Led to a lot of turnovers, Jay Webb. Ten for FGCU and six for FAMU. And there's another one. Is, it's the 11th turnover for the Eagles. Um, miss, uh, bad miss that time from Littles. Here's Abayev going to try to track that down. Well, I think a lot of this, just getting to know each other, but it's just energy. 
And a whistle. Because FGCU, 11 turnovers, six for the, for the Rattlers. Uh, Eagles cut down on turnovers, and I think they'll settle into the game. Because you can't have 10 or 18 turnovers and a half. And they're on that pace right now at 11. You know, first game jitters and early game nerves. As, uh, but, DJ Jones picks up the foul for Florida A&M. Gagliardi, can he hit a second shot? In and out. Over the back, Largy. And that was Cyrus Largy, so. And Gagliardi's been stroking well. You know, last year when he had his nose broken, that sort of really took a lot of wind out of his sails. Coming up on the seven-minute mark here in the first half. Well, you really want to see how FGCU closes down the stretch. Because we said last year they had that problem, didn't they, Tom? They did. Playing the full 40 minutes. That one went off of Gagliardi's foot. And Rolone will go out of the game. As you see Coach Michael Fly. With the tight haircut. Got that cut in the offseason for charity. Like in the cue ball look for Coach Fly. Spear knocks down a nice baseline jumper in Florida A&M has gone back in front by one. This Rattlers team projected to finish third in the MEAC Conference Southern Division this season. Caddo has it down low. Largy is open, and he strokes the three. First three-pointer of the game for FGCU, and they're back in front by two. Well, Largy's your Swiss Army knife. What do you need me to do? Score? Guard somebody? Underneath, and a one and done for Florida A&M. Largy going to slow it up, gives it to Abayev, who jams it home. Eli Abayev. Going to be fun to watch oh, in Alico Arena this year. But Largy once again saw the floor. Under six minutes to play as the Eagles lead a stretch to four. First half. Abayev going to be whistled for the foul from behind that time. We'll see not the big men. <laughs> you know, this is not playground basketball. Let him play a little bit in there. What's the old saying? No blood, no foul. <laughs> he will go to the bench. As they get it into Cameron Reeves. Spear back to Reeves for three. No good. Randolph. Spear this time. No. Yeah, there's and people bodies. on the back of people. Hitting the floor hard. <laughs> he was like on him. <laughs> he was on top of the eagle like he was a jockey at the Kentucky Derby, Tom. <laughs> you know, uh, talking about Coach Fly and uh, this offseason, his third season now here at FGCU. And he calls this, Jay Webb, he calls this his first player-led team that he's yes. had in his three years. Uh, the veterans really... Uh, teaching the younger guys how to do things. He's had what he's called two coach-led teams, and he says player-led teams always better than coach-led teams. And Point he's well really taken. really got that this time. Anyone Warren around to Rivers. And here's Caddo, some of the veterans in this team. Largy in the game right now. A little floater in the lane from Cyrus Largy, and the lead is six for the Eagles. Bam, you nearly turned it over. The sophomore guard, Cyrus Largy from Miramar, Florida. It must be now nice scholarship to scholarship player. Must be nice to bring a guy like Largy off the bench. Huh. Put six in the basket. He is a teammate's teammate. They all love him here. From <laughs> up top, long two from DJ Jones. DJ Jones is like, well, I, I'll just shoot it, Tom. Jones has six. He's three of five from the field. 
Cagliardi. Jalen Warren inside a bullet pass in there. Dakota Rivers slams it home. Now that's what I want my point guard to do. Find people. And the Eagles by six. Playing with a purpose. Spear. Under four minutes. And a foul from behind. A little touch foul that time. This time against Cyrus Largy. And that is his second. And that takes us to our final media timeout of the first half, Jay Webb. But the Eagles getting it rolling here offensively. Have stretched the lead to six. Back live in a moment on ESPN+. Plus. One, Southwest Florida State University. That's the FGCU effect. It takes a team. It takes a team. It takes a team. Eagles lead it 23 to 17. FGCU with 352 left first half. And we, you know, we, the COVID-19 effect uh, is affecting everything. A couple of road games for these FGCU men have been canceled. A game at UC Santa Barbara and at Robert Morris. And of course, we had the postponements uh, of other games uh, already, USC was supposed to come here. That's not going to happen. That's on hold until at least next year. Uh, Rhode Island, Mercer, Dartmouth, other ones that have been postponed, uh, Jay Webb, in this ever-changing world. You never know what it's going to be from day to day. Scheduling is a nightmare, to say the mm -hmm. least. Of course, uh, so many folks in Dunk City were excited to welcome back Andy Enfield. Head coach at USC, led the Eagles to the Sweet 16 in 2013, and now, that will uh, happen eventually. Tom, this young this man hailing the ball, 23, Dom London, <laughs> watch him. The man can flat out stroke the ball. Yeah, excited to see him, Dom London, in the game. The junior, the Juco transfer in there for the first time. Rivers, baseline jumper, he has got it. Uh oh, is that a new something we Dakota haven't seen before? Rivers here with six points now. A little out of control, and Florida AM turns it over. Look at defense by Caleb Caddo. So Dom London, number 23. It's another one of these fresh-faced FGCU Eagle players that you have not seen before. A brand new, one of the best JUCO shooters in all the country last year. See if he can knock him down here in Alico Arena this season. Cato from 16 feet. That's usually it. He was working on that shot the other day in practice. A push off. Mm-hmm. Well, they're going to get Jalen Warren on the foul. Ooh, I thought a little push off there, Tom. A lot of whistles here, Jay Webb, in this first half. And I thought I was at a whistle convention. It's the 14th foul so far between these two teams. Eagles on top by seven, and MJ Randolph goes to the line. Randolph. Uh, junior from Pensacola knocks it down. He's the top returning scorer for the Rattlers, a preseason all MEAC second team. He was the conference rookie of the year back in 2019. Misses both free throws, but a rebound. And Michael Fly's not going to like that as Johnny Brown puts it back up and in. Cuts. The FGCU lead to four. Tom London, Eli Abayev, Cato to Abayev on the give and go. Working it inside, rejected from behind by Jones. Now see on that one there, too many moves. Pump fake, put it up, but you cannot be dribbling, you know, not dancing with the star. Just put it in the hole. It gives the defenders uh, that much more time to catch up yes. to you. Reject like Jones just did. Oh, nice they throw it over the nice top pass. to London. London for three. Yes. Wait a minute. London. Did I, did I tell you he could light him up? That was from way outside, almost from London. Oh, I love it. A little international thing, Tom. <laughs> Makes his first three-pointer as an FGCU Eagle. 
Eagles by six, answering right back on the other end. Jalen Spear for the Rattlers, and it's back to a three-point game. Oh, we got a ball game, baby. Two minutes to play in the opening half. Warren penetrating, looking him stop on a dime in the paint, turn to the hoop, and put it in. He'll stop on the dime and give you some change. <laughs> Inside, knocked away. Caddo's got it. And a foul. Jalen Spear over-aggressive in the backcourt. <laughs> Robert McCollum is... Not going to be too pleased with. You know, basketball players are some funny people, Todd. The man reaches and has contact and then wonders why they call the foul. <laughs> Referees can see. Here's Warren in London. Into the corner, and Warren is wide open and buries the triple. Well, he's been working on his three. Jalen Warren with eight points. A minute to play, first half. They better get a hand on someone's face. And from outside, MJ Randolph, that's a guy that you do not want to give space to. Warren, not this time. Well, see, that's where you got to run some clock, Tom. And a timeout is called for with 44 seconds. Uh, check that 38.4 seconds left here in the first half. It's going to be a 30-second timeout called for by Robert McCollum. And, uh, incidentally, uh, Florida AM. and m this is their final season, J. Webb, in the MEAC Conference. Yes. They are moving to the SWAC, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, next year. Been a long run for them in the MEAC. A staple well, of that league. Well, for those people that aren't aware of historically black colleges yeah. and the black conferences, the MEAC and the SWAC are by far, I mean, they're legendary conferences. 100%. From that standpoint. Outstanding athletics outstanding academics because prior to integration a few years ago like a long time that was the backbone of educating the people of color in this country and uh but famu and tuskegee yes all those schools uh educate a lot of people fantastic universities and colleges uh, throughout both of those leagues and i'm glad you said that 30 seconds left to play in the first half Spear. Ten on the shot clock. I'd get a hand on somebody. Randolph dishes to Brown. Great possession that time by the Rattlers coming out of that timeout. Robert McCullough drawing that up, and the shot clock is off. Jalen Warren crosses the timeline with nine. We well, better do something fast. With five. Caddo, somebody's got to make a move. Caddo, and a foul from behind that, on MJ Randolph. That was not what you'd say something you want to do. So a quick substitution for Coach McCullough. The Littles coming into the game in place of Randolph. So a second and a half, 1.5 for FGCU to get it in, maybe a dribble or two, and then a quick shot. Well, it's, it's got to be a quick shot because it's – 1.5, you might get one dribble. Maybe one dribble, yeah. Eagles lead it by four. But I would find, you got Dom London down there. You got a Baev right there at the top of the circle. Warren down low. They get it in. Jalen Warren launches and off the mark. And that is the first half. Entertaining first half and an educational first half as well for, for us and watching both of these teams for the first time this season. A lot of new pieces on both. Ends. In this country, if you look black, you are black.
Back live inside of Alico Arena. We're in Dunk City at halftime of the season opener on the FGCU in Florida A&M. It's the Eagles leading it by four. Tom James alongside J. Webb Horton. And J. Webb, uh, a lot to unpack really from that first half. Uh, I see a spark in this FGCU team and some talent, some pieces that uh, are encouraging. Well, I think what you're saying is that this may be one of the deeper teams. I love the energy, love the decision-making, and I think, as you said, the offense is being run with a purpose. So I think the system they've instituted, the flow off, the flow offense, really works well. Now we'll see if they can settle in and play. Cut down the turnovers. 11 turnovers is one of the reasons this game's as close. Uh, getting hand up on shooters is another reason this game is close. As we take a look at the first half stats, and uh, interestingly, uh, nine different FGCU players have scored, Jay Webb, but the field goal percentage very strong, over 50%. Well, think about this. Three points. FGCU two for 10. The Rattlers are three for 11. Both teams want to ratchet up their threes. Scores in the paint, I would be sugar in the bigs because when you got 22, that's close to having diabetes because that's <laughs> how sweet it is in there. You know what I mean? So I'd get inside and work, the, work, it, work it to death, and then you got to make some threes. But I think the Eagles' defense has got to get better in denying and giving the Rattlers those open shots. Well, we don't want the diabetes, but no, the, no, no, we no, got to cut don't down want on the turnovers, and I think the... they did later in the right. first half. Take a quick break. Uh, we've got some first-half highlights coming up for you after this break uh, in the next segment. Uh, FGCU, by Shouldn't be here. Okay, Reeves, three. Okay. FGCU on top after 20 minutes in front of Florida A&M here at Alico Arena, 32 to 28. A season opener here tonight for the men. We also saw the women uh, get their season tipped off earlier this afternoon. Jay Webb and boy, with Carl Semesco's team so impressive in their big win uh, against Florida Memorial. Uh, that's another team that uh, has a lot of new faces this year, uh, but so much new talent. Antonucci, yes. Cincinnati, 18 points. First game ever in Alico Arena. I think she may have a future. Maddie Antonucci, the uh, true freshman, like Jay Webb mentioned, uh, lighting it up for 18 in her debut this well, afternoon. Well, she so. scored the first five points. Yeah. yeah. You know, so our ratings in Cincinnati must have went sky high. Huge. Huge. <laughs> As if they aren't already. I, I mean, mean, come on. That's be another but, 30 uh, people over there. That was her big introduction, though, to reigning threes here in southwest Florida. And Maddie Antonucci, get used to that name here in Fort Myers. Uh, but the men at halftime looking strong, uh, leading Florida a and in a back-and-forth battle uh, after 20 minutes, 32 to 28. What do you see in the second half from uh, each one of these teams, Jay? Will? Well, Eagles need to cut down turnovers. I think that, uh, once again, with 22 points in the paint, they got to start pounding it inside. But they also have to defend a little better because they're giving the Rattlers some pretty good looks from the three-point range and then from twos. So the Rattlers got to keep doing what they're doing, and FGCU has got to negate the three-point shots of the Rattlers and because their defense has been really good. Intensity on both teams because you see players on the floor. Eagles, Rattlers. You don't want to be on the floor with a Rattler because they'll bite you. <laughs> we don't want to be up in the air with, you with have, an Eagle. We'll take have, a, yeah, another fits. break. <laughs> we do have highlights for you coming up after this timeout uh, of FGCU's first half lead over Florida A&M. Yeah! Yeah! All right. Getting set for the second half, Florida A&M trailing FGCU 32-28 here at Alico Arena. And we'll 
Take a look at the highlights from the first half, and welcome to Dunk City, Eli Abayev throwing one down. And the dunk party had only begun. Justice Rainwater with a big tomahawk, and FGC was off and running. But Florida A&M hanging around. Cameron Reeves from Champaign, Illinois, stroking the big three-pointer from up top. DJ Jones also going to get into the act. A long two fell from up top. But Jalen Warren, look at the move inside in the paint with a little patented floater that is all Jalen Warren. And FGCU clung to the lead for most of the half. Luis Rolon, the freshman, so talented all the way to the 10. Johnny Brown for the Rattlers, keeping Florida A&M close, and that's where we are right now. Jay Webb, 32 to 28, a four-point lead for this new look FGCU team. If you're Michael Fly, give this first half a grade uh, from one to ten. Ten being the best. I'd say about a six and a half, seven. Okay, somewhere right around there. If I'm Michael Fly, what I want right now is the Eagles to come out and. Take that first five minutes and coast away mm. into Eagle Land. That's what they want to do. The Rattlers, they want to get in the battle. They want to also try to get up, get ahead, and uh, make the Eagles have to scramble from behind, Tom. Well, MJ Randolph for Florida A&M. Uh, it's going to really got to see more out of him, I think, in the second half. Randolph, you're one of the top players on uh, the Rattlers team, the top returning scorer with 13 points. As we get set to begin the second half as Eli Baev will inbound for FGCU. A smattering of fans with us here uh, tonight. Uh, socially distanced, COVID-19 protocols of course in effect. Masks, maximum of 1,300 uh, allowed in here. I don't think we have that quite that many tonight, but that's how that's going to work for this season. Here is Miller, long three, and it's good. Franco Miller, originally from Freeport in the Bahamas well, with a beautiful jumper. That was a beautiful Freeport shot there. DJ Jones gives off to Reeves. Hands in the passing lane, and that ball was poked away. Spear inside, and an offensive foul called against Spear. Cameron Spear is going to give it back to FGCU, who's got the seven-point lead. Where's a teachable moment? You cannot drive down the lane and go up in the air. Because the only place you can land is on the opposition. <laughs> Have a purpose when you make a move to the hole. Minute gone. In the second half, Jalen Warren across midcourt. Franco Miller, that three a moment ago, hitting open shots. So important. Warren, uh, not that time, but the Eagles did shoot it well, J Webb. In the first half, Michael Fly said, we got so many open looks last year, but just didn't knock them Man. down. And a foul. No, steps. Uh, tra traveling yeah. is the call against MJ Randolph. But FGCU shot it over 50% in that first half and made their first three here and making the open shots. Getting them has not been the problem for this squad the last few years. Knocking them down has been. And they have been doing that here in the First part of this game. Eli Abayev, they call it. He lowered the shoulder, Jay Webb. And you could see that one coming from a mile away. Yeah, but I'll tell you what. I think that the the FAMU player may be in the acting class. Because that was <laughs> he didn't get hard enough to knock down a, a stick. You knew the official was going to make that call. Though. Well, when you drop the shoulder, that's going to happen. Yeah, always. But when you flop... That house, that, that's just called, <laughs> let me help the official make the call. That's right. Randolph working against Miller. 
Jalen Spear over a Baev, knocks it down, a two-pointer, right foot on the line. The lead is five with a little more than two minutes gone here in the second half. Caddo going baseline, cut off. Rainwater back to Caddo, 10 to shoot. Franco Miller Steps. traveled. And that's the 13th turnover of the game uh, for FGCU. Well, that's two in the first three minutes. You don't want to keep that pace. On made baskets, yes, not turnovers. Franco Miller, this is a highly recruited kid out of high school. Played his high school ball at Crestwood Prep up in Toronto before going to Ole Miss. And now to FGCU. There goes Spear. And a foul. Is it going to be Rainwater, Jay Webb, or Warren? It is Warren. Jalen Warren whistled for that foul. And that is number two on Jalen Warren. Well, see, I thought there were steps before there was contact to be honest with you. Luis Rolone coming back into this game for FGCU to replace Jalen. And Caleb Caddo with the steal, and he is off to the races. Little soft touch on the dunk and another turnover and Caddo's got it again thanks to Rolone but FGCU gives it right back oh great defensive move by Rolone he comes right in the game here in the second half just like he did in the first and is an Im immediate impact Reeves Reeves against Rainwater. Jumper from 14 feet, no good from Williams. And that's going to go the other way. An offensive foul away from the ball. Is it a Baev, J. Webb? They got Eli Abayev on that one, and that'll be number three. On Abayev, the freshman from Deerfield Beach, who comes out of the game. Abayev and Austin P. transfer. Does bat everything well. Yes, he does. Eagles by seven. Solid defensive effort here so far in this game from FGCU. And that will go the other way as Jalen Spear, a freshman, called for an offensive foul. Well, see, once again, you can't go in there with your head down. Tom, you got to have a part when you're going in, have a purpose. If I see someone in front of me, i got to kick it out. I mean, this ain't bumper cars at the carnival, you know, <laughs> trying to knock people out. So the Eagles now with an opportunity after that foul call and give back from Florida a a chance to build this to their largest lead of the game. Franco Miller out to Cato, launches. You notice how they find the open man. That's a drill they do. GCU had not been uh, great from long range yet in this game, just three of 13. Look at roll on. With the steal. Ahead to Rainwater. Fouled and the bucket. Justice Rainwater. Now did you see doing work? Did you see the IQ of the freshman? He got it to the big man where he could handle the ball. Up high. Yep. High basketball IQ we talked about before for Rolone and FGCU's largest lead is nine. Rainwater can make it ten from the free throw line when we come back. I like it. In special memories, start with the experts from asunphotos.com.
What's the FGCU effect? 92 degree programs, 15,000 students, 33,000 proud alumni, and one Southwest Florida State University. That's the FGCU effect. Could FGCU be asserting itself in the early moments of this second half? They've built a nine point lead, their largest of the game, Justice Rainwater with the three point play opportunity. He'll step to the line in a moment, Jay Webb. I'll tell you, this is what they're trying to do right now is establish themselves. And this is going to tell a lot about this young team. Rainwater has really been working hard on his free throws. Uh, you want to. It didn't show right you, there, but he really you, has. You want to restate that. <laughs> Gatto, though, with the rebound. Rolone, Franco Miller finishes. Now, teachable moment. Franco Miller, pump fake, got the bigs in the air. Laid it off the glass. 11-point <laughs> lead for the Eagles. Miller has seven. Did you see Caleb Cato grab that rebound and get the ball back in play? And that's going to be called against Rainwater. <laughs> well, that guy put a step on him and went by him. <laughs> Rainwater's first foul as Dakota Rivers is going to come back into the game. Uh, the... Two guys that make a living really blocking shots. Rainwater goes out. Here comes Dakota Rivers with the long arms into the game. At 39 block shots a year ago did Dakota to lead the team. Now watch as Zach Anderson. Long can defend. Oh, that ain't going to happen. That is blocked. That ain't going to happen. By Rivers and able to save the day. Johnny Brown with the... Jump shot, but Rivers with one of those patented blocks. Get used to that. 14 and a half minutes left to play. Miller cut off on the baseline and rejected. And now, see, that's the defense. Did not get... The Rattlers an opportunity to put that shot up there. Here's Randolph. No. Miller with the rebound. Zach Anderson. Three of the five guys on the floor right now. Brand new faces on this squad for FGCU this year. Rolone. Here's Miller. Rivers for three, beautiful shot and stroke from Dakota Rivers. He's got nine, four of five from the field for Dakota. Now, if Dakota Rivers is making that shot consistently, big men in the conference have got to say, oh, no. That will extend his game in a big way. And Rivers with the rejection. It's an offensive foul. Dakota Rivers is all kinds of fired up right now. But did you notice Lewis roll on once again? Cutting down that lane, absorbing the contact. Charge, turnover, mm -hmm. FGCU. This Eagles team trying to assert itself and pull away in this game from Florida A&M. Rattlers last year went 12 and 15. They were 10 and 6 in MEAC conference play. Actually, if you want to play Florida A&M, the best place to do it is at your home because at their home last year, they were 8-0 in conference play. And they had the band, the drum line. Woo! Nothing better than the FAMU band. Well, now, Bethune Cookman may disagree well, on that. They're right there, too. <laughs> Largy. What a pass! Cato finishes! Cyrus Largy. The vision on that court, that is a thing of beauty. And the bench exploded for FGCU. They lead by 14. Long three is good from Reeves. You see, you got to put a hand in his face. Under 13 minutes to play. Still a double-digit lead for the Eagles. You see this flow offense. They're moving the ball well. Roland knows how to get down. Kicks it back out. And the big dog's going to the hole. Look at Rivers with the... 
finger roll a la the Iceman, George oh, Gervin. Oh. I'm Back the other way, Reeves again answering for Coach McCullough and the Rattlers. Well, that will not make Coach Fly happy. Like they gave him a speed pass. He's going across the turnpike. There's no stops. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> Great on offense, but uh, failure to get back on defense, defense and stop that shot. Stay with us. 12-19 left, FGCU by 11. Dude, that's it. In this country, if you look black, you are black. Eagles by 11 as we approach the 12 minute mark here in the second half. At Aliko Arena, a hot shooting FGCU team. A little too much mustard on that one from Rolone on the pass. Quick timeout, right out of the timeout, taken by Florida A&M. J-Webb, one of the things that really sticks out to me here so far is how well FGCU is shooting the basketball. They're at 60%, 60 percent, 60 for this game. Coach Fly said, and we talked about it earlier, they had open shots last year, but they weren't knocking them down got to make the shots that they didn't make last year and he's got to be pleased with that statistic well i think pleased with that statistic not pleased with the defensive effort of not getting hands up on people who should who are, they aren't open they're open because you aren't up in their grill from that standpoint another media timeout they come fast and furious stay with us 11:58 left to play We're coming back with a just. Eagles by 11. Michael Fly wants to keep this team healthy this year. And one of the tough uh, things that they have had to deal with is injuries. Uh, he told us last year about having trouble ever scrimmaging in practice, well, Jay Webb, uh, because of the multitude of injuries. Really wasn't able to do it all year long. Well, you couldn't. I mean, a Brian Thomas was hurt. Malik was hurt. Uh, it's hard to practice with eight players. Mm -hmm. Florida a and been a little listless on the offensive end. You need a playmaker right now. Javon Smith with the basketball in there for the first time. Here is Spear. Wild shot, no good, and that is not what Coach McCullough was looking for at all in that position. No. And I love Dakota Rivers grabbing that rebound and covering it up. And London from way outside, and we made one from out there in the first half. Well, he might have wanted to take a step in. Coach McCullough with the ever-present towel over the shoulder. Ala hashtag John Thompson. Right. <laughs> God rest to Coach Thompson's oh, soul. Man. We lost him uh, this year and certainly a rough 2020, and that was one of them, John Thompson. The great John Thompson leading uh, Georgetown to the national championship in 1984 and several Final Fours. Uh, tough loss for the sport. Johnny Brown from the blocks, and he knocks it down. And Johnny Brown has hit some shots in this game several times when FAMU has needed it the most. Well, he's a player. Brown with 13 points. He has quietly led them tonight. 15 on the shot clock. Rolone going baseline. London, can he hit it this time? No. London. Just the two points. 0 for 2 from 3 here in this half. Brown, not that time. Long arms of Jones got the rebound, and they score the bucket. Talk about Dakota Rivers and his long arms. How about J uh, DJ Jones? That cuts the lead to 7 as we dip under 10 minutes left to play. Yeah, the season opener at Aliko Arena for these two clubs. 
Rejected by Brown. Well, that was Eagles. a size mismatch in there. Well, the Eagles have hit sort of a dead spot here. Tapped away. Florida a and lucky to keep that possession alive. Reeves, Javon Smith, and he stepped on the sideline, did Smith. Javon Smith, a true freshman from Hallandale Beach, 6'4", uh, really didn't play in the first half, has come in here in the second for his first playing time. Well, here comes Caleb Caddo and uh, Abev and uh, Warren back in. See if they can get some offense going here. Florida A&M on a 6-0 run. They trailed by as many as 13. Eagles have not scored now in almost three minutes and 20 seconds. London, he hits it this time. Dom London. From Christiana, Pennsylvania, one of the best uh, JUCO shooters in the country last year. Coach Fly expects to see a lot of that from him. And Zach Anderson called for the foul. A Sun preseason polls, Jay Webb came out, the coaches poll, the media poll, FGCU. Pick to finish right in the middle of the pack, right at five in both of those polls this season with Lipscomb picked to win it in both. There's a takeaway from Zach Anderson ahead. Jalen Warren on the business end of that fast break, and the Eagles lead back to 12. Well, that was defense creating offense. Knocked away by Anderson, so he's... Had a couple of plays on the defensive end here of late that have been impressive. Justice Rainwater going to replace Anderson, and he gets a nice applause, a little hand clap, and a high five from Coach Fly and his team. Good minutes from Zach Anderson. Fourteen footer is good. Drops in for Rang. Senior from Tampa. Warren. Here's Cato. Seven to shoot. Caleb Caddo, look at the elevation on that jump shot. He's been working on that shot in practice. The whole team has these shooting drills, and you're seeing those drills come to fruition in live action. Caleb Caddo, yes, with a, the high motor. Well, I think Fly sat those three down to send a message. Pull-up jump shot, no good. Well, Jalen you know, Warren with the rebound. They had a hand in someone's face that time. And oh. Warren throws it away. Randolph threw three defenders to the bucket. MJ Randolph, who wanted to guard him. Under seven minutes. And that's a whistle on Randolph. He fouls Warren up near half court. To the under eight timeout that we go in a 10 point game. FGCU with less than seven minutes left to play. Are they on their way to victory here? Can they hold the lead? We'll find out. Stay with us live on ESPN. What's the FGCU effect? 92 degree programs, 15,000 students. 33,000 proud alumni, and one Southwest Florida State University. That's the FGCU effect. 
Coach Fly and his Eagles leading it by 10 with less than seven minutes left to play. He's open his third season will be the charm this year here in Dunk City where he's really, uh, for the first time, Jay Webb put together his crew, his group of players. So this is his team and his vision uh, after taking over for Joe Dooley a couple of years ago. Certainly different uh, styles between the way Dooley would uh, play and slow down the game and Fly wants to get him out and let him run. And now he feels like he's got the athletes to do that and the talent. Oh, I would say you are speaking the truth, brother. <laughs> Jalen Warren bringing it across half court. The Eagles, uh, the upside for them, they're shooting at 57%. There's another foul. Uh, the bad news for FGCU and Florida and uh, a lot of sloppy play, which you might expect in the first game of the season. Each team has turned it over 17 times. Well, but on the other side, that's only six turnovers in this half for the so, Eagles. That's right. So they had 11 at halftime. Yep. Gatto kicking it out. London. Not this time. Rainwater, look out. They'll send it the other way. Get nervous on a fall like that from... Rainwater is okay. They'll work on that perspiration down there. Justice Rainwater, obviously as much of a denier underneath as you're going to see, moves guys out of the way. 37 block shots last year, second only to Dakota Rivers on this team. Eagles with five more non-conference games on the slate, on the schedule after this one. Unless things change, they've got Florida National coming up on Saturday, December the 5th. So 10 days from now, it'll be their next game. Jay Webb and I will have the call on that one a week from Saturday. Then a trip to Miami, and then home for FIU, Weber International, and Georgia Southern before starting Conference play. Caddo called for the foul. That's his first. Tom, a, a text giving, giving a shout out to us from our old sports buddy, Dana Caldwell, an outstanding yes. sports writer for many, many years. And uh, Dana, we appreciate that. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your lovely wife. No better writer of Florida Gulf Coast basketball ever. I would say he's in that man, category. Dana Caldwell. One of two down there to make it a 55-46 game. Dana Caldwell shares the same initials as Dunk City. You know he's good. Here's Caddo for three. Yes. Caleb Caddo into double figures. 6 of 11 from the field. Cameron Reeves. And now DJ Jones, no good. Knocked out of bounds, and it'll belong to the Eagles. Well, the, that was an interesting call. Now, I know we live in southwest Florida, but... That was an interesting call, Todd. That's all I'm going to say. Well, a 12-point lead with 5.42 to play. Nine different FGCU players have scored in this game, Jay Webb. They had nine in the scoring column by halftime. Six different Rattlers have scored. Warren with 10 to shoot. Nice pass out there to Miller. Miller's got to know the shot clock. It's four seconds. He has to put up a shot that is blocked out there by Randolph and a violation. Well, see, my only problem with that set right there is I, I, I thought they just dribbled the ball too much. They quit ball movement, and then you get a shot clock violation. 
good as a turnover. You do not want to give the Rattlers life. you got to put your foot down and get away from them. Foul in the backcourt uh, by Miller. Perhaps a slight lull in the FGCU energy, maybe in concentration at this point in the game. With a 12-point lead, they want to see this one all the way to the house. Well, the thing is, you don't want, you don't want the blood flow to stop going to your brain. <laughs> <laughs> and off misses on the front end of that one and one Who's going to squeeze the orange? It's Justice Rainwater, and Randolph last to touch it. Man, you, <laughs> you put your hands in there with Rainwater, yeah. you might come out with no hands. <laughs> he is a tough hombre. Well, I tell you, this parade of uh, of free throws is, uh, you have to tell them to put a hold on your uh, fettuccine Alfredo at Zeno. That's right. As we keep going at this rate. <laughs> that was the fouls called on Randolph. It's his third. Don't ever get in the way of Jay Webb's dinner reservations. Oh. We've learned that over the years. Or the chill Merlot. We've had triple overtime games at... Uh, <laughs> Oh. The restaurant was closed by the time you got out of here. It was a to-go basket out by the window. <laughs> Rainwater missing the first free throw. And he's been working on his free throws. I shagged 50 now for him one day. He said that the first time, and he took one off the glass. There you go. Okay. All right, now I hear you. All I'm saying I is just, what I saw. I saw what I saw the first time. <laughs> Eagles by 13. That matches their largest lead. Rainwater has five. Four rebounds. Not a blocked shot for Rainwater tonight. He did have that monster jam in the first half. He makes one of two. MJ Randolph. Here's Jalen Spear. Great defense on this possession from this green and blue team. And a foul, offensive foul. Brown as Miller had position under there, Jay Webb. That is Miller's second charge he's taken tonight. And it's interesting you bring that up, as Coach Fly told us at uh, Franco Miller, not elite at any one thing, but good at just about everything. That's a good definition. Jack of all trades, master of none. Certainly, uh, we know coming in uh, how good a defender he was going to be and is. Luis Roll, can he handle the ball? Here's Luis Roll on it. Oh, what a pass to Abayev. That's the next generation of FGCU superstars right there. Now, wait In a minute. action. Did you see that vision? Jim Boylan, the old coach of the Chicago Bulls, says this guy has NBA player vision. Mm -hmm. Off the front iron, knocked away. Rolon touched it last, and that'll take us to our final... Media timeout of the evening here in Dunk City. The Eagles enjoying their largest lead of the night. They're up 15 on the Rattlers, 354 to play. Stay with us from Dunk City. Ever. I might. I don't know. Coach McCollum coming out of the media timeout. He's got to dial up something right now with some urgency to try to overcome a 15-point deficit, Jay Webb, with under four to play. Well, I would say, hey, Coach McCollum, they got some pieces here, and they haven't played a, a bad basketball game. I think they've met a, a, a team that's just a little deeper and has played really well defensively. So uh, the MEAC lookout and the SWAC, <laughs> are you sure you want them in? 
Yeah, the <laughs> next year that's where they're headed. It'll stay with the Rattlers, last touched by FGCU. Because they're going to be a force. Speaking of conference play and the oh. revised schedule in the A Sun has. Segway. Each uh, team playing four home sets and four away sets. Uh, short on the three was Jalen Spear. Well, let me tell you something, Tom. Here's what I'm seeing. Rolon to Abayev for the slam jam. Roll on. And they've hooked up a couple of times here in recent minutes. Is he your point guard of the future? I'm telling you. Could be. Oh, and no. a traveling violation against Brown. And... FGCU asserting itself now in this game. Tom, what we've seen with the depth of this Eagle team, mark your, my word, the back-to-back -back schedule favors a team that has this kind of depth. Yep. Because when you've got to go up against the bigs, Asabadula, Dewari of Stetson, first night, tough game. Second night, those bigs don't want to run up and down the floor. That's right. Because this is a young athletic team. All conference games will be played on Friday, Saturday throughout. FGCU opens up on New Year's Day, January 1st, and then January 2nd they'll host North Alabama on consecutive days, and that's how it works. Uh, foul, it'll all against FGCU. And then uh, the Eagles the next weekend, they go to Liberty for the Friday, Saturday back-to-backer, January 8th and 9th. So there's no home and home this year right, for teams. Back you either to back. you get four uh, opponents at home and the other four They're you get on, on the road. road. So. Hey, shout out to our buddy Shane Pellegrin who's under a little uh, quarantine right now. And mm -hmm. hey, Shane, miss you, love you, man. You do a great job for us. He does. But uh, hey, it looks like Marley Ray is doing a good job for you tonight, big guy. Right. She's everywhere. <laughs> He'll be back soon. We wish him the best and a great Thanksgiving. Miller on the floor fighting for it. It's taken away, and MJ Randolph has got it and Man. finishes. A couple of hungry guys down there fighting for that basketball Man. on the 50-50 ball. Man, the brothers are looking like they're looking for a turkey leg. 63-48. <laughs> I'm just saying, they were down there fighting for some dressing. 2.10 left in this ball game. And that one thrown. I'm not quite sure where that was going. That one thrown away. Two oh two remaining, and it belongs to Florida AM. Out comes the mopping crew. 63-48. You know, FGCU shooting at 57%. Florida A&M not uh, terrible, 46% from the field. Uh, the turnovers, uh, both coaches not going to be pleased with the 21 for FGCU, the 19 for Florida A&M. So, obviously, after a first game, uh, things to clean up. Randolph, he is relentless, keeps fighting. Here's Morang, and that one falls, and he gets the roll. Well, I'll tell you what, Coach Donnie Marsh is going to be happy because when the popcorn was popping, the Eagles were hopping. Yeah. He <laughs> when it matters most, all the way in the tip in as uh, Williams tips it in. No, no, that was. And they will wave that, that off. That was basket interference there. <laughs> thought from here, but thought from the naked eye that had left the cylinder, but. Not to be. The, the officials are the ones who get paid for it. So Are they going to review this? I think they are going to go to review. So, I, and, and Jay Webb, and it, I, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm sure we'll see it, but I thought it had kind of gotten out of the cylinder, and maybe that should be good, but they'll take another look. And a 13-point game. Again, uh, 10 days off for FGCU between now and their next game, which we'll have together. December the 5th on a weekend here at Alico Arena. We'll have the, the men uh, Saturday night against Florida National at 7 o'clock live on ESPN Plus. And then sa uh, that's the Saturday game. And then Sunday afternoon, it'll be the women's game against Temple. Oh, Temple. 
Coming Ooh. in from Philly, and that ought to be a good one. Out of the big five. Mm -hmm. Oh, the Palestria. Philly John. basketball. St. Joe, Villanova, LaSalle. Ooh. Now let's see if we can see it right here, Jay Webb. Take another look as this ball will. Where is it? I think oh. that should count. Yeah, I think that should count. I know I have the, the – I don't see things up close very well with the glasses now, that, uh, but, but the far – the way things far away, I can still see that. Is that why you have the 62-inch TV and, yes. you, and you sit five feet from it at home? <laughs> you do what you got to do. You do what you got to so do. So let's see if they count it. No. They waved it off, didn't they? Okay. Yeah. Cataract surgery does marvelous things for you. Uh, speechless. I thought that was a, a good bucket. So, still a 13-point game. Taken away, taken back by Miller. Now watch Roland. He's going to run this clock like a big-time point guard, mm -hmm. man. For a freshman, he is just plays so seasoned. Cato just does beat the shot clock. Under a minute left to play here in Dunk City. Spear, no good. Largy. Miller finishes. Miller with nine points in his FGCU debut. Cato leads the way with 13 for the Eagles. Reeves hits a beautiful three from the wing. Now, that was not bad defense. That's just better offense. Oh, and Rolone there may be a freshman mistake. He took the eye, uh, his eye off the ball in the backcourt. He is still a freshman, Jay Webb. Yeah, but he's wise. Infallible. I mean, that's the only thing he's done wrong. <laughs> I'm going to give him a pass on that one. I'm with you. 30 seconds left. Baya Whoa. defense out there. Oh, oh and another bank is uh, open uh, before 9 p.m. on Wednesday. I didn't know that. I thought it was just ATM open this time. Abayev. Now you saw, see, they're Cato. just. And so they will sit on this one and let the clock tick away. And fans here in Alico Arena, the ones that are here, are on their feet and I think impressed by what they have seen as both coaching staffs wave towards each other from afar. I know it's customary it, no. handshakes this time, of course, because of COVID. But the final score is FGCU 65 and Florida A&M 56. Caleb Caddo with the 13 points to lead the way. Reeves with 15 for Florida A&M, but Caddo with 11, or with 13. Uh, Dakota Rivers had 11, Jay Webb, but they spread the wealth. Something fierce at FGCU, nine different guys scoring. I think, uh, I know it's early. I know it's early, but uh, we may be on the cusp of seeing a new era in FGCU basketball. Well, we've seen uh, the talented freshman uh, looked sharp tonight. Rolone, Zach Anderson, uh, you know, then there was Eli Abayev, and then, uh, you know, the, some of the other new faces. Uh, Franco Miller Jr., Fr Dom London looked good uh, tonight. So, so many guys getting into the act. It's a good mesh, it feels like, so far between the guys who have been here and the guys who are just arriving. I think there's sort of a pecking order. Kayla, Eli, and uh, probably Miller. Mm -hmm. Then the next 10 are pretty solid and pretty even. So this is going to give Fly some options. If you're having a bad night, you can, you can sit somebody down. You can bring Luis off the bench. Let him run the point guard. You know, if you bring in Dakota off the bench, he's going to block shots. He's going to be shooting the three much better. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's an impressive win tonight for FGCU to go to 1-0. Your final score, FGCU 65, Florida a and 56. So for Jay Webb Horton and our entire crew, I'm Tom James saying so long from Fort Myers where the final score again, 65-56 FGCU. All games airing on the ESPN Networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN so long from Dunk City.